It's Carter Sports back. And today, we finna head to the transfer portal where we ain't been in a minute to check out this defense alignment, big behemoth that just hopped in it. So let's go. And if you been here before and you returning, please hit that like, please. And boy, if you ain't subscribed, you better subscribe. Disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Entering into the chat, we got your boy, Jamil Burrows, a 6'3", 323 pound defense alignment that can play the three tech or the two tech and you can kick him outside. You know what I'm talking about? Now this kid played three years at Alabama in the SEC for rotational playing time. You know he wasn't the starter, he wasn't the, the number one guy on the depth chart, but he got rotation and he got playing time and he flashed. He shows ability to dominate. He seemed like a prime and nice prospect to seeing right the coach Henny. You know what I'm talking about? This kid is, is rated an 89 prospect in the transfer portal. Uber potential seems like from the report now I'm hearing just need to add consistency to his game and probably need a new fresh scenery now he played at alabama right got into it with one of the strength and conditioning coaches i ain't gonna lie and c might not look at him because you know we be acting bougie sometimes you know what i'm saying but he had got into a fight with his strength and conditioning coach i don't know the full details or what happened but that's what happened and i heard he had a pellet gun incident as well but you know what i'm willing to give kids chances especially at this age man he seemed like he would need a good nfl fatherly type figure like eric henderson man i think we'll be a good change of environment and scenery for this kid and i think we exactly what what he need and he exactly what we need you know what i'm saying that's why i like this kid and he's an interesting prospect right so after that incident, he transferred to Miami, but he transferred in June and he didn't get the waiver. I guess he transferred too late and he couldn't play last year in Miami. And he was set to um, play for Miami this year. I don't know what happened, but he hopped in the portal. I say he hopped in the portal January 25th or something like that. But I'm confused. I thought the portal was closed, but... <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm looking at the portal. This kid hopped in the portal. I guess the portal never really officially closed, man, because I could have swore it was the portal dead period and kids wouldn't be able to hop in. Maybe he hit the deadline. Maybe the deadline was January. Once February hit, maybe it's too late. I don't know. That don't matter. This kid in the portal. And I, I want to let y'all listen to some Bama insiders and some Miami insiders and what they got to say about this kid game. You know what I'm saying? So check out this clip, hear their analysis on this kid game, and I'll be right back. 23, going back to the 8A game in April, uh, you know, he figured to be very much in this in this mix. Um, you know, they returned guys like Jaheim Otis. Uh, he's going to be outstanding as a, as a sophomore. Um, you know, they've got some other guys that are emerging like Tim Keenan, but you know, he was he was still in the mix to be a top three guy on the interior. Now he's a little bit of a, I think he's a little bit of a tweener. It just depends on the front you play him in. I think he can be a three tech in a in a four three defense. Uh, in Alabama's way of doing things, he fit well because you could stretch him to the five technique at end in a three four. But they played so little base now; it was so much nickel that you saw him more as a two tech in their four, essentially a four man front. Uh, and their nickel. So uh, base, big nickel, uh, and pass rush. I, I think he can give some of all those things. It's just, uh, 
reaching a level of consistency and trust from a coaching staff that's going to kind of put him in position to do so. Travis, can you stay more on, you know, what, what Alabama expects from a guy at his position, you know, listed at that nose guard spot? For sight, when you first saw him at Alabama, you thought this is a more of a classic nose tackle type. It might be a guy that's limited to the base defense at nose. And maybe as you get into the big nickel, you keep him in there uh, in five defensive backs when it's maybe a run situation. But uh, I thought he showed you that, again, they used him at end, too, uh, in some of their looks as recent as April and March and April in spring practice. So uh, he offers positional versatility. I think you can play him some on the nose if that's what you want to do. I think in your dime packages, he was a guy at Alabama that they were strongly considering uh, when they went with six defensive backs and their pass rush looks, putting him over the center and utilizing him there as almost a solo true defensive lineman on the field. And then everyone else is more of like an edge rusher or a linebacker type. So I, I think he does give you that. Uh, it's not just value as it relates to his position in general. I think in how you can move him across the front, package to package, uh, is something Alabama certainly planned to do with him, or I tried to do with him. And I would be surprised if that's not the case with Miami too. And from a Miami standpoint, essentially, again, the 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 this happens a lot with defensive tackles. The statistical stuff doesn't jump out at you all the time, especially for a rotational guy. So this is a guy with 15 credited tackles in 20 games over his career. But when it's going well for him, uh, what does it look like? What are the flashes that you're seeing with him essentially when it when it is all put together, when he is on top of his game? Yeah, I think lateral movement that belies his body type. I mean, just being honest, when you look at Jamil, you don't think twitch. Uh, you don't think agility as much. You think more of maybe this guy's a a gapper, a two-gap nose tackle. But he does offer some of those attributes athletically. Um, and I, I think it's more intangibly with Jamil where you hope the strides start to really show up. And that's in the way of just maturity. You know, I think if this guy is fully engaged uh, and committed and perhaps the change of scenery will be a good thing for him, uh, there's still plenty of upside to Jamil Burroughs in terms of being a high-level uh, defensive lineman at a place like Miami. I, I don't have any doubt about that part. It's intangibly, you know, can this Miami staff, can he connect in a way that seemed somewhat elusive to him at Alabama? You touched on intangible said. Now, is y'all hearing what I'm hearing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is y'all hearing what I'm hearing? Because it sounds like I'm hearing this kid is full of untapped potential that's waiting to be unlocked. And that 6'3", 320-pound body. You know what I'm saying? And the man said it don't look like he should be able to move laterally like that and have the athleticism, but he do. You know what I'm saying? Which allows him to be a perfect candidate for this defense because you know what else I heard? You know what else I heard? Positional versatility. And that's what DeAnton Lynn preached. So this kid could play on the inside in the nickel or a dime or you could kick him outside. Like, this is what we need. This is the prototype player. Untapped potential. And I feel like we got the perfect coaching staff to tap into this. Bring him out to the West Coast, bring him out to LA, get him a fresh start, welcome him with arms. See kids who 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 been in a lot of trouble, I notice like when you gotta welcome them with open arms. You gotta deal with them delicately. Some people want wanna give kids like this a chance it would be extra hard on them. You gotta you gotta love kids like this and gain trust. And I feel like we got the coaching staff that'll gain trust from this kid. And I feel like if you gain trust with a kid, sky's the limit. He gonna keep his head on right. And who's the better role model than Eric Henderson? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like we need him and he need us in a sense because we got the best culture for him and he need a fresh start on a whole different coast, a brand new start. Somebody who's not gonna hold his pass against them and make him feel wanted and welcome and welcome him as a Trojan. I love to have this kid. I love to have this kid because he's just full of untapped potential and he didn't flash. But sometimes when players ain't consistent, it's something going on probably mentally. But when the player flashing, he showed you who he has that ability. So the only thing stopping him from being consistent is the right mentality, is the right coaching. You know what I'm saying? This kid, if he turned the corner, 
This kid is the NFL draft pick. You know what I'm saying? If he turned the corner, he got that potential. He got that potential. So I'm rooting for this kid no matter where he go. But I, I want him at SC. I, I, we need this kid at SC because this is one of them kids. I'm telling you, if he turned the corner, <coughs> excuse me, if he turned the corner, he going to be a monster. And even as he is right now, he was good enough to be in the rotation at Alabama. It ain't like he left Alabama because he wasn't good enough and he couldn't play. He was getting on the field. He played in 20 games in, in uh, two years. So it's like, he good. He ain't like a player that was came out of high school, thought it was going to be good and then pan out. Nah, he good. He good enough. It's hard to earn playing time on an Alabama defensive line. And he played as a freshman. You know what I'm saying? So, this kid got untapped potential, man. And, and that fight with the strength coach that he had that has let me know his mind wasn't right down there in Alabama. The environment wasn't right. The people, he probably didn't mess with them people. It, it, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 that was probably a build up or something. You know what I'm saying? So, obviously, he wasn't liking the institution. He wasn't really liking the program if he fought the strength and conditioning coach. So, I feel like bring this kid out to SC, give him a fresh start, let him know how serious it is though, like man, it's time, like, you can't keep messing up, you gotta get your game together you gotta get your consistency together and you gotta get your stuff together off the field, and SC, we ain't good enough to give a player a chance, it ain't like we got, I can see if we already had like six or seven Bear Alexanders, we don't so sometimes we gotta grab kids like this who may seem like they could be a red flag, but we gotta give them a shot we ain't got too much to lose because I feel like at worst, he'd still be a rotational piece, a 300 pounder that you could just put in there to lean on offensive linemen and give the starters a break. But give the other team no break, at least when it comes to pressure, they still gonna have to move around 300 pounds. You know what I'm saying? So, Jamil Boros, man, come down to LA. We got the best culture for you. I'm rooting for you. We finna open you with open arms and we got plenty playing time for you. Hey, you might start, but I guarantee you, you gonna get more snaps than you was getting at Bama. You know what I'm saying? So what y'all think, man? Let me know in the comments. Should SC, should we take a chance on this kid? He got a little red flag. I mean, fighting the strength coach, that might scare some coaches. Like I don't want this 300 pound kid break, like taking off on me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So I can see how coaches might be hesitant. If you George, if you one of these major programs and you and you thick with defensive linemen, you may like I pass. Like boy, you fighting the coaches. But a team like SC, where we need them bodies, we ain't too good. We ain't too good to get this player a chance, man, because he got that talent. And this could be his reclamation story. This could be his turnaround. He went to SC, that was Coach Henny, and took off from there. Let this be our success story. Somebody else trash, we turn to riches. Somebody else mistake, we turn to a great decision for us. So what y'all think, man? It's Carter Sports. It's USC. It's Trojan City. We fighting on forever. So let's go.